I am fascinated by the quality of Dr. Rhonda Patrick's work. Like her videos and articles are so informative and so reliable. Unfortunately, they are also quite long. And if I was not a nutritional freak, I would not really understand them. I would not really know how to implement what she says and what the key message is. So I went through Rhonda's content and in today's video, I will share with you her top 10 tips for health. By the way, my name is Albert. If you are new here and want to optimize your diet to burn fat, live long and feel awesome, consider subscribing. Okay, the number 10 tip from Dr. Rhonda Patrick are broccoli sprouts. Now, as you may know, broccoli and broccoli sprouts are a part of a cruciferous family of vegetables. One compound that makes this family of vegetables very interesting is sulforaphane. But the amount of sulforaphane varies a lot between say broccoli and broccoli sprouts. Rhonda believes that in broccoli sprouts there is actually a hundred times more sulforaphane than in, than in regular broccoli. So what she does or at least what she used to do is growing her own broccoli sprouts. And it's not as hard as it might sound. I tried it as well and it's pretty effortless, takes like few minutes, like three minutes a day. And if I can do it, you can too. Plus it's incredibly cheap. You just buy this pack of broccoli seeds and then like it takes two teaspoons of them to grow a whole jar of broccoli sprouts. You just need them seeds and you need a sprouter, which can also be just a cover for a mason jar, which costs like a buck on Amazon. I believe that now Rhonda actually takes sulforaphane supplements instead of that. But if you do so, uh, well, first of all, they are more expensive, but you also have to chew on some actual cruciferous vegetables while eating those supplements. I don't really want to explain it here, but if you are interested in this topic, definitely check out Rhonda's or mine video on sulforaphane. So broccoli sprouts is number 10. Number 9 is uh, fish oil. I think fish oil is the best supplement that you can take. It contains a huge amount of EPA and DHA, which are omega-3 fatty acids. And EPA is incredible for fighting inflammation, which I believe is the number one cause of all the diseases, at least most of them. And DHA is absolutely necessary for proper brain function. So fish oil is, in my opinion, the best supplement by far that you can consume. Just be aware that some brands sell fish oil that is already oxidized and that would actually cause more harm than good. So you want to go for a good brand, such as Carlson's fish oil. And once you get the oil, preferably in an oil form by the way, because the capsules are not very well absorbed. Once you get it, you want to store it in a cold dark place to prevent from oxidating. Number 8 tip from Rhonda Patrick is time restricted eating. Rhonda Patrick fasts for 12 to 16 hours every day. And as little as that can already bring a ton of benefits in comparison to eating like all the time. It helps you stabilize your blood sugar. It helps you burn a ton of fat. It also increases your autophagy. And for me, I feel pretty awesome in a fasted state. So if you haven't tried intermittent fasting yet, I highly, highly encourage you to do so. Number seven is that she consumes either grapefruit or pomegranate every single day. And ferulic acid inhibits the pro-inflammatory gene uh, TNF-alpha. And when you consume pomegranate, it creates a molecule in your body called urolithin A. It's actually called urolithin A. And in short, this molecule helps, helps you flush out the damaged mitochondria from your body and recycles it for energy. So Rhonda Patrick eats either grapefruit or pomegranate every single day with her breakfast. Number six is that she is also a big fan of salmon roe. Salmon roe, aka fish eggs, aka caviar, are an amazing source of many things including omega 3s iodine and other nutrients. Obviously though, caviar is also expensive, so I personally don't consume it yet, but once I have money for that, I definitely will, because it's like the best food. If you do have money for that, that's definitely something I would incorporate into my diet. Number five is Rhonda's vegetable smoothie. She makes a big vegetable smoothie every morning. She puts a ton of veggies in there, of course, including kale, lettuce, spinach and avocados and uses milk for the fat content to make the nutrients more available. Of course the milk is grass-fed. She's actually one of the very little health-conscious people 
who consume milk. But if you go for a very good brand and you make sure it's grass fed, it's definitely not a big deal as long as you tolerate it well. And this smoothie provides her with a lot of magnesium, potassium, lutein and zasantin and almost any nutrient that you can get from fruits and vegetables. If she still makes them, she also puts broccoli sprouts in there, but she makes sure to preheat them so that the in, in short so that the glucoraphanin becomes available. Number four is that there is a vitamin D sweet spot. You see most of us are deficient in vitamin D and it is obviously a big problem but what's maybe equally as bad is getting too much vitamin D because it can lead to stuff like calcification and some nutrient imbalances. So more vitamin D from supplements is not necessarily good. The optimal amount of vitamin D in your blood is around 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. And obviously the best way to get enough but not too much of vitamin D is to get your blood tested to see how much you're getting and how much you need. But if you're not gonna get your blood tested then I would go with around two to 3,000 IUs per day. And also make sure to get enough but not too much vitamin K2 and vitamin A as well. That is because these three fat soluble vitamins act synergistically with each other but if you have one of them in excess it will deplete the other ones. Number three tip from Rhonda Patrick is that there is an IGF-1 sweet spot. Now IGF-1 or insulin like growth factor 1 is a hormone that's being demonized by vegans especially and it does make sense because it does promote cancer growth it's actually one of the main reasons why cancer occurs. But IGF-1 is also very necessary for your muscle growth. And muscle loss is just as, if not more problematic than actual cancer. Because as you get over 40, you tend to lose around 1% of muscle every year. And over years, this becomes a significant loss. And many people unfortunately die simply because of falling down. I actually believe it's more common than heart disease which is already believed to be the number one cause of death. So you definitely don't want IGF-1 to be too low. But obviously again, you don't want it to be too high so that you would be at a big risk of cancer. I guess the best way to implement this would be to get blood tests and get our IGF-1 number to find out what dietary changes or what lifestyle changes we need to make. But in short, the main thing that increases IGF-1 is protein, especially animal protein. And the main thing that decreases it is caloric restriction or even fasting. So I believe that the way to go about IGF-1 is to eat moderate protein, not too high, not too low, and also incorporate some fasts in our schedule. Number two is that Rhonda Patrick takes a B complex and multivitamin. I think a multivitamin is being demonized. But that's because most brands sell low quality stuff. There is typically very little vitamins or they are in a wrong ratio which causes some imbalances. Also most vitamins and minerals in there are typically in a wrong form. For example with vitamin B12 or cobalamin there is no way that you can absorb cyanocobalamin yet that is the form that everybody uses because it's the cheapest. So if you go for a multivitamin or a B complex definitely make sure to go for a high quality stuff. But if you do so, I believe there is pretty much no downsides to taking your multivitamin. And especially if you have a very high metabolism or you are very active, you will need more nutrients and this is a way to get them effortlessly. And the number one tip from Rhonda Patrick is to customize your diet. Testing your genes will give you a ton of very important information. One good example is that it will tell you what vitamins and minerals you need more of because of your genes. Another one is that you will learn about what you are likely to die from and this will help you make dietary and lifestyle changes that support your health. Like not somebody else's health, not general health but your health if that makes sense. Like for example I thrive on a ketogenic diet but if you discover in your genes that you don't tolerate saturated fats very well then it would be horrible for you to follow it. So it is really important to know your genes and you don't even have to understand the results. You just have to run them through some app or some, yeah, some app that will tell you what exactly it is that you have to change. For example, Rhonda Patrick has one. So she recommends buying your tests, your DNA tests through 23andMe 
and the process will take around one to two months and you will get results and then you will apply them in her app and get and get some action steps some some tips so customize your diet it's very worth it so these are the top 10 tips from Rhonda Patrick and I would like to know your opinion on those if you like this type of videos and you want to check out other episodes on other smart guys check out this series somewhere here on the screen it's free if you haven't yet make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time